episode 157 of Who That Confessional. Waiting on all you cats and gals and men and mice and whatever is out there listening to the show. Nutra rats and crawfish to come in and hang out with us. We got stuff to talk about. So this Tuesday we were joined by Dave and Rashad from the Panther Nation podcast. Shout out and thank you again for them coming on. Thursday we've got news and stuff to talk about tonight. Next Tuesday we'll have another NFC recap edition. And then we're, we got guests lining up for us, guys. We're, we're going to have people on here. Keep on entertained. But we got news tonight. We wait for y'all to roll in. We want to go through our hoodats. How are you doing, Elias? As we wait for by on Twitch and YouTube to roll in. Elias is sluggish, man. Elias, Elias is sluggish because Elias ate unhealthy yesterday. Elias, Elias had burgers. Elias had pork and beans. Elias had potato Ooh. salad. Um, Elias had fried fish. Uh, like I completely went the opposite route of my diet for a day and my body has been literally bashing me uh, since about 11 o'clock last night um so yeah man I'm ah, 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 I'm just but you know I I do see someone just randomly saying something like Elias turned into a Panthers fan lol I did not I don't know what what even speaking of how did you even get that how do you jump to that conclusion how do you i don't i don't even know like i don't know you must be like really really uh like fit because the conclusion that you jump to is at least the size uh i want to say the equator man even your jokes are off tonight fam i even your jokes are off tonight man i'm just uh Mm. It's all good. Well, let's let's get some energy in here. Get some hoodats out there. I see Leek. I see uh, the Pink Bo- Buble, Donald Hoover, Nicholas, Brennan, Hamilton, Shane, Tyler, Demetrius, Key, Shane, Terrell, Shane, Sir Luke, uh, Brennan. I think I already said Brennan, but you get it anyway. Daquan, Taven, uh, Isaiah, Twigger, Riley's in the house. Dev, free again. Who that to all y'all? If I have missed y'all, y'all rolling in. Who that to you? We love you. God bless you. All this stuff. The show's not ending in two minutes, but that's just kind of the flow we're having. Let's get into the little bit of news we have. You want to start with the big topics or the little topics? We can start with the big topic, man. We, big so topic. We, we, missed, we missed on Marcus Davenport actually being a part um, of Von Miller's, what did he call it? He called it a Pass Sack Rush Master Summit. Camp. Pass, Pass Rush, Rush Summit. Summit. You could call it Sack Master oh. Camp, though. I'm good with that. Yeah, I mean, yo, he was in, you know, he was in some some pretty good company there. Um, when I took a, a look at the list of names, you had Charles Harris, uh, who's last year's first round pick for the Miami Dolphins, Shaquille Barrett of the Denver Broncos, um, DeForest Buckner of the 49ers, uh, even Bud Dupree made it out um, from the Pittsburgh Steelers, someone that's in a contract year. Uh, I think what's Probably what's important when I look at it, other than Bradley Chubb from the Broncos, Davenport was really the only rookie I think on that on that list. Um, and to me, I think listen, the fact that the guy has come in and and wanted to learn, because um, there were plenty of guys that could have been. I don't know if they were invited or if they mm-hmm. if they chose to to go to the symposium. Um, but for him to continue to want to learn. Um, and grow and impress. Uh, even when the season has hasn't started, he's always already showing that professionalism um, that guys sometimes have a, a hard time with coming into the league. It, it's not like defensive line is an easy position to transition to um, for rookies. A lot of people wanted Charles Harris uh, last year, and he was pretty much silenced the entire season. Um, in Miami. There there wasn't much production there. Um, And so on the flip side of that, you kind of maybe want to quell maybe the thoughts of what he can do this year. We've heard numbers tossed out like 6.5 to maybe 10 sacks. Um, And yet he's close to being one of the more physically gifted guys on that list. Um, I know one thing that, that Charles Harris didn't come out with was an ability to win with power. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is something that Marcus Davenport comes in kind of ready made, which is a good thing because it, uh, I can't remember the, the, the defensive lineman last year that was being mocked to the Saints that was coming out from Michigan. 
Um, he was kind of the same size as Marcus Davenport, about the 6'6", 265, 270 range. And yet I, I recall seeing that even though he was that size, he played like a much smaller person. Um, mm-hmm. And, then, you know, sometimes that can be a plus. That can be maybe a difference. You have a big guy that can win with, with agility. But I want to see my big guy, like, forklift people and, and win with power and, you know, have a change-up, have speed be his change-up. Um, but the power game be something that's that's already kind of integrated into what he does, and Davenport has that. He's he's got the power. Um, we've seen him use a, a, a one arm to win. Uh, he's he's proficient at the bull rush, and yet with the four six speed off of the snap, uh, four five speed off of the snap, you know that he can use speed as a changeup um, mm-hmm. to get a tackle on his heels and then pin him back, step in. Uh, turn that speed rush into power and back him into the into the quarterback. And so for him to be working with Von Miller now, he's going to probably learn a lot of more a lot more moves in his repertoire to work with. Um, but this is exciting for me because this is going to be a big piece to what the Saints want to do this year. Considering we don't know if Okafor is going to to come back, well, um, <clears throat> we need somebody with some size on that that right size. Even though we feel like Trey Hendrickson. Um, could possibly steal some snaps there, but Davenport is going to be big. I say this, man, and you mentioned Taco Charlton of the Cowboys. I got to say this: yeah. I hate. You know why I hate Taco Charlton from the Cowboys? Because he has a duck why? face on his profile picture on Pro Football Reference. It just makes me dislike him because he's got a duck face. But I actually liked him a lot coming out of school. But one thing I, know, I like about the pass rushing some is it's not just Von Miller teaching these guys. Two other pretty prominent players, I think many people have heard about. Warren Sapp and Bruce Smith, they were also there helping teach some of these young cats. Those are Hall of Famers. I mean, and and while you can't go to something that lasts a day or two and truly revolutionize your game, to get an idea of what's made these guys successful and to talk to them and get pointers, I think, it, it for me, it shows – the dedication and want to get better. It's kind of like, go back to Teron Armstead, how when he came in, one of the first things we saw him doing was Willie training Rofe. with Willie Rofe. And while mm-hmm. I don't think that just going to Willie Rofe and, and hanging out with him and training for a couple practices or days or whatever can make him a better player long term, I think it helps set him on the right track and gives him the right mentality. It gives him the right questions to ask and the right answers to have early on. And that's what I appreciate about Davenport. I'm seeing him put in the work early. And I think that is giving me a lot more confidence in him than some other players. And I'm not dissing any other rookies. I'm not saying rookies can't be successful if they're not heading out to Hall of Fame training camps. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying just from a Saints perspective, it's a big positive that, you know, here he is going to this. Oh, by the way, all you worried about his hand surgery, how he can't attend camps and all these other stuff. Well, here he is attending a camp before training camp. Uh, just fine. You're going to the pass rush summit. But you know, I, I'm very encouraged that, a lot of players go work out on their own time and stuff during this break between OTAs and training camp. And you may hear from them, or maybe they get a little bit lazy. Some players get lazy. I'm very happy to see that Davenport's not one of those guys. He's keeping it up. He's trying to get better at his craft. He's trying to hone that crap before the season starts. And while this doesn't change my expectations for him, it definitely gives me more confidence in what he's doing. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I want to I, I want to put the cap. I feel like mm-hmm. you, you have to put the cap on what he can learn. And yet, you just go back and look at the Senior Bowl and see how much he was able to digest um, after coming in and not necessarily making the impact mm-hmm. initially that people thought he would make at practices. You know, he came in with the size. He's coming in from a smaller school. He's used to beating up on the tackles, and he gets to the Senior Bowl, and he has some issues very early on. And yet, you hear that he took the coaching really well. And then you saw him apply um, what he learned in those three days during the game, um, which is a significant boost to what Sean Payton has already mentioned about him learning and processing things really, really quickly. Um, so while they're the cert- the, it definitely des- deserves to put that cap, um, listen, just to see him go and soak up that information and know that there could be anything, something that he can tweak about his game, that he can learn from that and continue to bring it onto the field. I think sky is the limit. I think he's going to be underrated. I'm looking at a lot of the um, – I saw some of the Madden, the, the rookie ratings come out. Oh, man. He didn't even make the, the top ten uh, rookie. So I'm, I'm guessing he's probably going to start with somewhere between a 75 and maybe a 74 rating, hopefully from maybe like a 76. 
But hey, Michael Thomas started out as a 71 his rookie year in Madden. Uh, apparently registered on the radar. Those guys don't get it right, but I think the Saints have done a really good job with drafting. Um, and again, point out, he was one of the top 15 talents um, in that draft. People didn't think that um, you know, the Packers needed pass rush help. Uh, and a lot of people figured they'd go more towards maybe an edge rusher, um, but they changed schemes. Um, Dom Capers was known for, for liking to, to push out, um, get most of his pressure from the edge game, and then they changed out coordinators. Um, and they now have Mike Patine, and uh, he's more of a secondary guy. Um, and it came from under the Rob Ryan tutelage, who Rob or, mm-hmm. or Rex even. Um, Rex was known for having multiple guys or sending a lot of blitzes, but he didn't have, like, that one primary pass rusher. What he did have was a very good secondary um, with Darrell Revis um, and Antonio Cromartie uh, leading the charge there. And so the Packers went very DB heavy in the draft, and so it opened them up to trade back, um, swing the gate open for us to go in and get Marcus Davenport. People have talked about how was it worth it. I think it was definitely worth it. I, it's, it's To me, it's not even a, a question of you yeah. know, was it worth it. It was clearly worth it considering that, you know, you're in a new age of the NFL to an extent. And so defensive ends can be just as valuable as quarterbacks. You can almost look at it as a 1A, 1B now with how much passing goes on. I think you get the extra output in passing. Teams are passing over 60% of the time. Um, and so you need a guy that can get to the quarterback during those times, which is likely what the Saints will envision him doing his rookie year. 60% of the snaps, uh, allowing him to just go and attack. Uh, I, th- I do believe that they told him not to even think that much during the during the uh, the rookie mini camps, the camps. Um, it pretty much was like, just go which is exactly what you want from him early to kind of shrink what you ask him to do um, and allow him to just continue to play fast, see that yeah. four or five speed. Um, well, this goes back to having him think. what I've talked about for, for months now and why, and I think the Saints right now are on the same page with this by how coaches talked with Davenport. I mean, you're not expecting him to be a three-down starter. You're not going to ask him to go out there on first down and clog the end of the line. You're going to let him pin his ears back and be what he is, and that's a very good pass rusher, and then let him grow into everything else. I mean, and I think that's the best thing for him because if you let him perfect what he's already good at and then worry about improving on everything else later down the road, I think that helps you more because of the depth of the old line. And, and you talked about this several months ago. I like that we bring up the Alden Smith the early Alden Smith in his career. I like that yep. same type of pathway for Davenport. And I don't think anybody goes and looks at Alden Smith's career from a numbers standpoint. Let me pull up the pro football reference just to make sure I get the numbers right. But I don't think anybody's going to go to Alden Smith, starts off his career with 14 sacks next year, 19.5, and say he was a failure because he wasn't a three-down starter against the run his rookie season. I don't think anybody yeah, says yeah. that because he didn't start a single game as a rookie, not a single one. It, and I see a similar path for Davenport. Let him pin his ears back. Let him be that guy on the field as a pass rusher, and then let him grow into more. I think that's great for him. That seems to be what Ryan Nielsen, what Dennis Allen, what Sean Payton have all talked about him being, and uh, I'm excited. And you know what I'm, I'm interested in? I'm interested in seeing if they're going to – because I, I noticed in a couple of games Dennis Allen – really like to drop his lineman in the coverage. Um, and a couple of times I watched him, especially in that, that last game versus the Vikings, um, I watched him drop Cameron Jordan into coverage um, and then pretty much rush three with – Yeah. Sheldon Did it several times last the only, year. The only true threat um, at the pass rush position, and then he got blocked up uh, with a double team and nobody else could penetrate. Um and, you know, you, you kind of leave your line out to drive in that, uh, a line out to dry. And so I wonder if you possibly could use him in that role a little bit more, especially with his athleticism um, and his ability to chase down plays that he showed. Um, we talked about maybe not so good with his lateral movements, probably better going forward. But mm-hmm. he did do some dropping back at times. And I like the aspect of maybe being able to use him in that way and change up sometimes while still allowing Cam Jordan to do less of that so he can continue to put pressure on the quarterback versus dropping back and then not really being a factor um, where you need him to be a factor. So I wonder if that is an option for him. Of course, you don't want to really 
uh, feed him anything because one of the reasons the 49ers did that with Alden Smith is because they wanted to teach him the finer aspects of playing the linebacker position in the 3-4. Um, mm-hmm. And they didn't want to force feed that on him, so they slowly fed him the linebacker position while also just allowing him to be a pure pass rusher when it came to games. Um, and then his second year, that obviously slowed down for him, um, and he made a lot more plays because of it. But I wonder if that just gives Allen a new toy that he can he can tinker with um, while still keeping his best guys rushing the pass. Yeah, and I think that's what you'll see this year something similar and one of the reasons that Alden Smith was able to go out and do that is because he was surrounded by a lot of talent and whether you're in a 3-4 under or a 4-3 really it doesn't matter you know the, the schematics and the gap assignments are basically the, exactly the same you know but if you have talent around him you're not required to ask these guys to do so much because we talk about Alden Smith but you also had Justin Smith on that team who was an all-pro player you had Patrick yep. Willis you had Navarro Bowman Willis and Bowman at that time, we're like primed together. That might have been the two best linebackers in the league at that time, both on the same team. It was insane uh, seeing those guys in their prime like that. But regardless, you had a lot of talent around him. I see the same thing with the Saints, with having guys like Cameron Jordan. We're very confident what Demario Davis can do. You know, we like having Onyemata Rankins in the middle of the line. You know, so while it's not all pro level like the 49ers, similar strategy into what you can do with Marcus Davenport. This goes back to what we talk about, man. Seeing him put forth the extra. Sometimes we complain about extra. In this sense, it's good to see extra. Love seeing Davenport go to things like the Von Miller Passing Summit, talking with Bruce Smith, talking with Warren Snap, talking with Von Miller. You know, two Hall of Famers and one guy who will be in the Hall of Fame whenever he retires. Great to see him trying to learn from those greats. Yeah, because Von is up there in sacks. Like, Von has, what, close to 100, if not – um, I, I know he had. Is, I think he's like eighty-four sacks. Let's pull up the stat book. Let's. He's uh, had a full. He's had ten, ten or more sacks in every year that he's been like healthy or played in sixteen games. Yeah, let's see. He is at and eighty-three only, and a half. Eighty-three and a half. So he's only got one season where he had less than ten sacks, and that was two thousand thirteen when he only played nine games. So yep, that injured. was the rough so, year. He is on a blistering pace. Probably one of the. And I think was Dennis Allen was there for that pick. He's the first one that used um, Miller in that kind of that four three Sam linebacker position where he allowed his uh, kind of allowed his, his play speed. I think Vaughn came out and was like a four or five guy when he came mm-hmm. out. So he had the speed and the range to to play off ball linebacker early and then to rush the pass on third downs. Um, if not one of the better picks in the last decade, one of the better players to come out in the last decade. Um, so let's. So, PFT has an article up suggesting that uh, if everything goes well, Drew should probably break Peyton Manning's passing yard record um, in Game Six of the season. That game just happens to be the Baltimore game, uh, where Drew also has the chance to be what the first quarterback to have defeated all 32 teams he'll he'll join a club i think uh Favre and manning are there too that have beat all 32 teams successfully yeah. it puts him in a very elite club agree or disagree that i i think it's a lot to put on them i i don't i think i put it like this if it does come to that I think Baltimore is either it's going to either allow us to get a win or they're going to allow us to break the passing yards. I don't think it's going to be both in that instance. Um, I think that would be a lot of pressure. I also think that if the Saints come out passing the ball, um, as much as we think they may to offset uh, Mark Ingram being suspended, I think that it makes more sense to probably break that passing record the previous game at home versus the Red Redskins, uh, primetime game, um, I think you probably, best case scenario, take care of that then. Um, and then you mm-hmm. get 13 days off before the Baltimore game, and you can focus solely on just getting that win um, in Baltimore. Um, seems like a good prediction. Uh, seems like a good spot, but I really do think that happens before yeah, um, well, let me insane. let me just go ahead and throw out some Saints bias here. I'd rather he breaks that against the Redskins game five because that's a home game in prime time. Right. 
I'd rather he do it on the Monday night before. And um, if he does it in Baltimore, great. But just the fan in me, I'd rather Drew break records at home. Just like when he broke the record throwing to Darren Sproles at home. There's just something special about doing it at home. I agree. Does a lot for the fans. Gives them a chance to celebrate. Go home, like right home and celebrate with the kids. I just like, uh, like I said, I think the strategy coming out for the first four games that Mark is going will be to pass the ball more. I just, I, I, I know we know that Drew can still pass. We know that Sean can still call a passing game um, and, and build that game plan. And then you look at um, who we play in some of those games and it just seems like more of a fit that they will come out throwing the ball early. Gives them the, the best advantage. Um, you definitely won't end the season uh, like that. But it does kind of let Drew be Drew early in the mm-hmm. season um, and just kind of wing it. Uh, we do know that, that Sean definitely has a thing for demolishing um, Greg Williams um, in specific games. A little games bit, a little bit. Them. Uh, you've got the Buccaneers very early. Um, I look to see us put up points versus them, considering they'll be out. I think that'll be a tough game. They'll have to contend with the offense there, um, especially since they put a lot of they they put a lot into that front seven. Um, the Bucks did to start off. You, you end up drafting Vitave. Uh That front seven, I think, is going to be tough to run against. Um, and so I see them passing the ball in that game. Then you've got the uh, who else do they play those first four games? Who the Saints? Yeah. So you got Bucks. You've got uh, Browns. Redskins is number five. You got Atlanta. You got Atlanta after the Browns game. Yeah. Those can. T- well, I'm missing yeah. one. Who's the other one? The Giants. Yeah, Giants. And I think okay. the Giants is a game that you probably end up passing the ball a lot. Redskins. We know that Sean Sean consistently has trouble going against those beefy three four. Uh, defenses, and we kind of saw how that game plan played out um, last year with Kirk Cousins as quarterback. I'm not sure that you have to maybe do the same for for Alex Smith uh, as far as worrying about if you're going to go tit for tat. But I think that I don't think anything changes there. I think you attack them through the air. They play they play a lot of zone um, coverage there in in, in Washington. Uh, usually, Sean tends to feast on mm-hmm. zone coverages, and so I think you attack them through the air. The Falcons can be a gimme game, maybe a lot of yards, possibly not a lot of points scored in that game. Um, and in the Giants, I think that's a game where you end up uh, probably high scoring. So it, it it just makes sense all around um, for them to get that that knocked out during that first week. Um, well, and then you get the Ravens. Well, I mean, I, I hope we just destroy the Ravens. I really want Drew to finally join that elite club so that everybody can – Underrate him continually. Guys, the phone line is open, 605-475-4892, access code 299-353. While we wait for you guys to join, remember, hey, we need your help sharing this out. Alvin Kamara jersey, baby, is free, and we draw one for it in less than a week. We got five days left before we draw for this jersey, and somebody wins a men's XL Alvin Kamara jersey in black and gold. Big old number 41. Alvin Camera. Yep. I'm not showing you the Alvin number. Camera. Not showing you the number. Nobody gets to see the letters. Nope. We don't know. It might be crooked. It might be backwards. It might be sideways. But it's free and it's for you and you can have it. I'm excited. You can see it on my face. I'm real surprised we have it. I think we've only had like 90 entries for a free jersey. I realize it's June. Well, July now. I realize it's July, but my goodness. Who doesn't want a free jersey? Maybe we're gonna have to do this again, like sometime. Oh, oh it's happening. Like Thanksgiving, like I, I'm pretty sure that ends up blowing up a lot bigger. I don't know. People just aren't. Are we the only ones that that do 20, like football all the way through? I, I feel like people really do lose a lot of interest during the off season. Like I don't really, I don't really care. And I'm I'm all football all the time. I don't know. Now see, Matt, uh, I, Matt I, trying I, to call I, me I out. Got a so. friend. Oh, you did. So, somebody signed up. Somebody just signed up. Oh, what? Up. Yeah. Oh, look. There it is. See, Matt trying to call me out, so I got to prove his Camara jersey. He said it's a Roman Harper jersey. Although, I mean, <laughs> who who would hate a Roman Harper jersey? Roman Harper was a good player for a few years. 
All right, here we go. I'm opening out the package. I want to hear about it. it ain't being worn. Bam. It's even spelled correct. Look at that. K A M A R U. Wait. No, I'm kidding. This is Camaro spelled correctly. There you go. Brand new 41 black jersey. Sign up for it. You need it. You finally caved in. I I knew there was a C. Ain't no dagger. He got that case stitched in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke says Deuce uh, you and Alana should sign it maybe get Camara to sign off if I get Camara to sign it I wouldn't give it to y'all uh, <laughs> that's cold blooded me okay. no what I would do I would just take both Camara jerseys and give one away <laughs> but if that's I get some blooded, sign it got... I'm gonna look you I'm a Saints up. fan too I ain't out here trying to get Von Miller if I get Von Miller to sign something yeah I'll give that away I don't care look Y'all should you know, appreciate I, I that I'm be. being up front. Y'all should appreciate that I'm being up front with this. At least I ain't trying to yeah, lie. Cause... You you shouldn't actually try to lie at any time, Rev. I'm not. I'm trying to be a... Look, man, you're trying to twist my words. I can't Rev. even get this back in the plastic bag no more. Because I had to take it out for Matt. Y'all better call in. 605-475-4892. Access code 209-353. I don't know. I had to get my wife to fold this dang thing because I don't know how to fold it. And I just got a black Camaro jersey just sitting all collecting dust. I got dust bunnies all over it. See, look, you even got – look at this. You can – this is how new it is, baby. You can peel the plastic tag off of the um, insert right here. That's how – it's got plastic on the stuff. Look at that. Look you at do it, realize Jason. that's like therapeutic for some people. Right? I know like, it is, especially when you get a new on. phone. Oh, look at this. Dude. Look. Oh, Look at that official NFL, um, NFL.com licenses and stuff. Oh, we got little, look at all these little tags. Yeah, baby. You want these tags. Just do it. Just like the sign says, just do it. It is a, it is a, it is a Nike jersey. I don't, I thought it was Ike jersey. Ike? You remove the N. Yeah, you just remove the N. I think it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty solid. Here we go. We're going to get a wide shot. This is the jersey y'all y'all uh, fighting for, right here. Who wants it? It's uh, free. Just uh, sign that up. Weebok. That's Weebok. Nike or Weebok. They don't do Weebok no more, man. NFL mm -hmm. changed. If you got a Weebok jersey, it's probably some uh, Racky Williams jersey, number forty-three. <laughs> Racky Williams. <laughs> Tramal oh, says, uh, "Deuce don't buy no knockoff stuff." <laughs> Look, bro. Uh, that's all I do. I <laughs> let's just be real. You ain't gonna walk in my closet and find anything with a two hundred dollar price tag on it, fam. So I'm just saying. You struggled like you struggled almost to lie there. You were like, no, I didn't lie. I'm just being real. <laughs> Anthony wants to know where I ordered it from. If you want to know where it got ordered, go to this link that I'm about to send you. And if you win, I'll tell you where it came from and I'll send it to you. It's coming from my house. I Josiah says he'll send you his address, a.k.a. he feels like he's the winner now already. Hey, look, we draw on July 10th. We're going to do it during the episode, during the Hudak Confession. We're going to do it at the beginning of the show before we get into um, all of our stuff. So we'll announce the winner there, or maybe towards the end. Yeah, White Wolf is right. Beggars can't be choosers. If it is free, Perhaps it's so. for me. So... Where are all the callers? Why is nobody calling in to even hate on the jersey? Huh? I, I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like nobody loves us anymore. No, my, man, we'll end the show right now. And we'll cancel the jersey giveaway. We'll just make everybody mad. We'll go full on Boy, petty. You ruthless. So. ruthless. You ruthless. I know everybody wanna hate on my free jersey. Oh my good. What I'm just I'm just flabbergasted. Unrest says why. Why are there no Saints Funko Pops? There's one Saints Funko yes, Pop, did. and I have it, and it's Drew Brees, and it's right up there. I actually have the only one. I mean, not the only one, but the only one they make. Yo, you get some fresh stuff at the A-Rab store. I've, I've gone to Florida and kind of racked up with the A-Rabs. There you go. Drew Brees Funko I Pop. Have at it. A, a what pop? In the box what still. What is what is that? A Funko Pop. What what is a Funko Pop? It's a collectible. 
Hey, we got our first caller of the night. We ain't got to cancel the show forever. Six seven eight six eight eight. Who's this? What you got for the show? Uh, I just was watching the show and I just I had to call in. <laughs> well, I we appreciate that. <laughs> I didn't really have any thing to say. I just wanted to call in, but I'm gonna just end it with who that. That's all. I'm hey, look, say. that's fine, man. You can talk about whatever, fam. Uh, you. you not whatever, but I mean whatever. I, was, I, was, I might put a limit on that. Whatever. I mean, I, mean, well, I really, I, I, enjoy, I, I love y'all. So I, I watch y'all all the time, and uh, just just keep up the uh, good work with, 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 with what y'all doing, man. That's all I want to say. We we going yeah, to keep it going, going man. We we made a, a dedication on you guys. We're going to keep doing the episodes throughout the off season. So even when it gets slow right now in July, you still going to hear us talking. Awesome. I'll be good. You too, brother. Appreciate, Appreciate you calling you, in. Oh, we got another caller, too. 228. This is Will. How you doing, Will? Hey, guys. How y'all doing tonight, man? Fantastic as soon as people man. sign up for this day jersey. That's awesome. Uh, you guys are having a lot of fun. Uh, I'm with Elias Football 365. I mean, I can't get enough of the content and stuff personally. And the older I get, the more I like it. I don't know. I guess I'm a late bloomer, but, man. I'm 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 past fifty and I just I can't get enough of this stuff. Well, it also Man. helps that like from a marketing standpoint, the NFL has really taken over and like pushed this is an all year thing too. So like even when I was growing up, there wasn't this much football on the news all the time, and now it's everywhere. It just makes you want more of it. Uh, absolutely, and I don't know. Man, I've been going back and forth with the you know we all hate the Falcons, but uh, it's because we have such a long history with them. But our rosters. The talent levels are so close. No, I mean I give us a slight edge because of number nine, but man, those rosters, the talent level. I mean it, it's pretty close. What do y'all think about that? Well, Goose thinks that the Falcons are more talented. I um, said that. Okay, first of all, get get in line because I definitely said that last year. I said I talked about their roster and their roster's talent. When have I said this year that they're that. When did I say they were more talented than the Saints? Bruh, you just said that maybe like during the offseason. When did I like, say they were more talented than the Saints? Word for word. Bruh. When did I say that word for word? I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna if you go back about twenty four episodes, you will hear Rams So like before say, the draft and before the free agency? Dude, you this has been something we've had arguments about the fact that the Falcons are more talented. <laughs> Like, oh, I can't believe you just backpedaled. I ain't backpedaling. I said that they are just as talented. You are too. He's playing corner, man. He's backpedaling so fast. I know. We use the shuffle technique around here, fam. I think they did a double move on you, and you're trying to catch up, man. No, I'm not. My thing, my argument has always been that Saints fans naturally don't respect the Falcons roster enough. And it's always been to me their coaching that's been the problem why they completely fell off the face of the earth. I've never said that Matt Ryan's better than Drew Brees. It's always been Drew's better. Absolutely. I mean, but that that is that, that's a pretty interesting debate, man. I I've seen a lot of publications they put Atlanta ahead of us. I personally think that it's just too close to call, and Look, uh, you know, number nine puts us over the hump. You know, here, here's why they put Atlanta above us because Atlanta's a bigger market, just like. The that, betting, that the betting sense. numbers came out, and even though Green Bay is a small market, they've got a huge fan base. Green Bay has better odds to make the playoffs this year than the Saints do, according to the odds that we got uh, at SB Nation. Right. The the Houston Texans, and this is I love Deshaun Watson. I think those that's a legit team down there. Houston Texans have better right, odds than the Saints, according to Odd Shark. That, now, that's a you problem. Think that's because of our division, our division maybe. The vision probably That's plays into it a little bit, but you also, I mean, because I don't think it can be all division because they give Atlanta and Carolina a much worse chance than, than they gave the Saints. I think it's just it's a small market thing, and even though the NFC South is eat up with these great rivalries and it's always great matchups, for the most part, it's not revered as much as big cities are and big teams are. 
Well, you probably got a point because I was born in the L.A. area, and I also lived in Houston 20 years, and it, it is a different beast. But, oh, and to give you, I mean, just because you mentioned L.A., both Los Angeles teams have better odds per odd shark of making the playoffs than the New Orleans Saints. Those are real talented rosters as well. I mean, San Diego finally has a legit defense now with Phillip Rivers. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like them to go to playoffs, man. Yeah, really and this not and this isn't me knocking those guys at all. I think that the, we're talking about very talented teams here. But of all the teams that they gave playoff uh, favorability to, the Saints are the very, very last one before it goes to the other side of the spectrum. And I think a lot of that is just the disrespect that you get from being small market because nobody's ever going to come out and say New England is a bad team, no matter what happens to their roster. And right. they, Yeah, I saw a lot of publications. They put the New England in a top four roster. They're not. They're not a top four roster. Yeah, they're I mean, they're a top one all... coaching staff. <laughs> exactly, yeah. and and number twelve behind the center. I mean, that's what that is. I mean, but hey, man, I just wanted to um, say thanks for uh, including this. It's it's real fun, and man, what do we got? About fifty eight days or something. Well, we are right now a little less than three weeks from the start of rookie training camp, and right at three weeks away from. And I, I'm to the point now where I consider training camp the start of the season because it becomes news every day. You get to see guys yeah. playing football every day. You actually can go out and watch the guys playing football. So I, maybe I'm just too dived into this. I consider training camp part of the season. So uh, to me, we're only a couple weeks away from football. But, yeah, the official season is about 66 days, I think, for the Saints, 65 days, something like that. But you're right, it really does start because what if you get a, a horrible, like what if the Falcons get a horrible injury? And yeah, what guys? if the Falcons I mean, get a horrible injury? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, absolutely. I ain't jinxing our boys. Yeah, I mean, but, it, hey, it, it's great. Deuce, I appreciate you guys, brother, a lot, man. That's I appreciate you coming in. Lately, man. Absolutely. Uh, who that, babies? Who that? Who that, man? Man, it, it is good. And that kind of brings up another talking point of, I know I feel this way, but has this really permeated to everybody where everyone considers training camp the start of the year? Because I really do. Like to me, when training camp rolls around, football has started again. When I get to see these guys out in pads playing, installing playbooks, where the fans get to actually interact regularly with the players again, to me that's when it starts. I'd have to agree. I mean, doing this for for the years I've been kind of really involved with football, um, training camp is the – it's the thing. I mean, it's it's July is already my birthday month. Um, it, things start to kind of kick off for me, and so training camp starts right around the area of my birthday. Um, and so that's usually something that kind of leads into it. And it's like football is is back. You you get to see, you know, you you find out even news finding out who won the conditioning test. Yeah, uh, it's something that you you look forward to. Um, you know, the beat writers get back out. Uh, they're constantly updating things on Twitter. Nothing's set in stone, and yet just hearing um, guys doing different things and knowing that the wheels are finally turning uh, adds its own level of excitement. Um, it's it's usually pretty big, man. Training camp, I know I, down on Saints Report, we usually have Jubo, who is out there for training camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, she usually provides, like, really, really good insight and detailed, like, hey, this is what happened. You had 11 on 11. You had 7 on 7. Oh, here's who she puts in some serious work, man. She puts in a lot of work. Um, and so to to have that, I mean, it's it it's always usually typically very monumental. Always usually typically very monumental. I really really. And by the way, Tess mentioned um, earlier that we sometimes ignore the comments, but I gotta say right now, I see Donald uh, trying to slide into Tess's DMs. Y'all need to calm that down. That's not what the chat room is for. Get out of them DMs. We trying to have, I, I know we we trying to have football discussion. Y'all sliding DMs in the comments, so we're going to start policing the comment section again. I use I'm usually in the comments. So I'm, I know I'm you kind of upset that I missed that. Mm, Real yeah. G's moving silence like lasagna. I know, I man. Donald <laughs> over here all smiles in the comments. We see you, Hoover. <laughs> we see you. Too much. <laughs> Anthony says, are either of us going to be able to make it down to training camp? I know I'm not because of the whole buying the house thing. I'm not sure if Elias is going to be able to make any of them, but I will not. Will you, Elias? Elias will one day like to make training camp. It's probably been on my list for like the last oh, six I want years. to ask him one question. Oh, okay. 
Ask a question. Barge in. Hello? Hey. We, yeah. we, you here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, I've I got a question for y'all now. Uh, where do you see the Saints defense in 2018? That's the, is it, it, do you see us between top ten or top five? That's, that's, that's all I want to see. Mm. This is a this is a reoccurring theme. Um, it is. We, we've we've talked about this a couple times, but it's good because we're in a position where we can actually talk about how good the defense is going to be instead of the reverse. <laughs> no, it, it's absolutely a good thing. I've been wait. I'm I'm a very defensive oriented guy, so I've been waiting for a year like the Saints had last year since 2013. Um. The Saints. I mean, it's 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 all about the youth. I think a second. I think second and third years in the system, um, will help a lot. Uh, last year, the Saints really played a lot of heavy man coverage, um, and there there were times when we were outmatched, uh, talent wise, especially when you looked at that Viking game. Um, and you there's a lot of things that you maybe want to do, coverage wise with with zones that you maybe couldn't do. Uh, show different looks. Um, I think having a second and third year in the system will help things a lot from from what they can do defensively um, and how they can continue to flush the quarterbacks, which is what Dennis Allen is all about. Um, he wants to confuse. He wants to hit them. He wants to beat them up. Everything is about affecting the quarterback in some way. Um, you turn around and add uh, a Coleman from the from the Panthers, and suddenly you can do a lot more disguise. Because here's the interesting thing: I went and looked up that five-two defense, kind of what um, mm-hmm. what 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 Wade runs. Um, and in order to run that in a certain way, you need to have pretty much what amounts to two free safeties, um, guys that can cover the back end well, because you're going to be sending five guys a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe you can get, especially for the DBs, you can get some man under coverages a little bit where the DBs can kind of, because they're not worried about the ball getting over the top of them, um, they can undercut routes a little bit. I think Crawley has ball skills. I think when the ball is over his head, he kind of suffers a little bit, especially when he has to locate it uh, because he's he's having to stay on his man. But in that trail technique, um, they can kind of get around and undercut some things, get his head around a lot quicker. Um, you have Coleman back there playing free safety. You can play a lot more two high looks as well as mix in um, the single high safety looks that we did. So you get all of that on the back end, but then you not only get that, but you get the upgrade on the pass rush um, that you'll probably get back. You have Hendrickson going into his second year. You have Rankins going into his third year. On Yamada going into his third year. You add Davenport. Um, you've got al Qaeda Muhammad probably being able to show something. Uh, you've got a lot to work with there from a pass rush standpoint, especially in depth. And so you add that to what they're now able to do on the back end coverage wise because of more experience. Um, you add that to what should be a much improved pass rush. And then you add that to the fact that they're not facing a murderous row of quarterbacks next year. Um, the, the schedule is not necessarily unfavorable when it comes to what teams like to do. Not very many air out teams, a lot more running teams. And so you can see them start to limit yards, limit points. It's things are favorable for them to be a top 10 defense, especially when it comes to points allowed uh, next year, which is something that you really like to harp on, which is points allowed and not yards. And usually the rankings are by yards. Mm-hmm. Um, I can That's see exactly them the getting to are. somewhere. You know, 21, 24 points a game, which I think is enough to win with Drew Brees as your quarterback. Well, just uh, I'll let you go on your, your your tangent there, so I can do some research. <laughs> but we got go another ahead. we got another go. I, I you said basically everything I said. I do like that you mentioned the five two or the bear or as what is more commonly known known as an eagle front. It's known as several different things. But one key thing about the that defense is the coverage it it pairs with most commonly or most effectively is the cover three or the single high, which is what we already run a ton out of. So this would be a, an opportunity to put more of what the saints have a luxury at. And that's defensive linemen on the field and less actual linebackers because uh, you'd have yeah. that three man front, but then you could just have somebody like, you know, Davenport playing on the outside, have maybe Klein and Davis as your two guys in the middle as your Jack and your will. It, it might it might work. I could flow with that. 
We got a call, though. I want to get to this call. We also got some Super Chats. Riley, uh, Jared, shout out to you for your two Super Chats. Luke, we'll get to your question in a second. We'll get to this caller. 813, who's this? What you got for the show? This is Demetrius uh, in Tampa. How you doing, Demetrius? I'm not a Bucks fan, so I'm a Saints fan. I just live in Tampa, so that would go. one is really that would important go. to me. I was fine, man. We, we, we got who that nation everywhere, man. We got who that nation in Atlanta. We take over. Yeah, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, my question for you guys is special teams. Um, with Jamerson, Scott, I mean, is Tommy Lewis gone? What's the situation with the coaching staff? Uh, did we get the coach back on special teams? Uh, what's going on there? Well, to answer the first one, uh, Mike Westhoff is coming back. Uh, he announced it about a month ago. Was it was it Ross Tucker's podcast he went on and, and talked about it? But anyway, he, he did come out about a month ago. Mike Westhoff will be coming back and coaching. Uh, as far as Tommy Lee Lewis, ah, that, that's a tough one, man. Um, I think the Saints made a concerted effort to address special teams as a whole, not just the return aspect, but the defense of special teams as well by going after guys like Cameron Moore and Natrell Jamerson. Plus, you already you signed Banjo last year. You had Justin Hardy, who was a standout. Arthur Millette did good at it. You know uh, They have really focused on special teams. So uh, it could end up putting a guy like Tommy Lee Lewis out because they're only going to keep, in my opinion, five receivers. And I don't think he makes that cut, and he might lose his spot to – a couple of these other guys we got. So, uh, does, what about Jarrell? Does he have a chance of making the team? Um, that's the tough thing for me. Is I, I think there's several practice squad positions open right now, but I don't think that there are a lot of actual roster spots open. I think most nice. of the roster is set. And uh, you're fighting for those 10 practice squads. And th you, there's certainly plenty of options. There's going to be any, a couple of extra defensive backs. There's going to be probably an extra wide receiver. You know, there might be an extra running back, depending on who they like the most. There's going to be extra linebackers that are all dedicated to being special teams players. You know, uh, the question is, who shines the most in the next month, training camp and preseason, to earn that spot? The main reason I think Tommy Lee is gone is because I think the, re the return ability he provides, Boston Scott, is better. He's going to take what little build of return Tommy Lee could provide and take it. Now, I also didn't think Tommy Lee would make the roster last year, and he did. So, I, You had to have a development receiver there. I mean, we, we were lacking a, another speed threat. Yeah. Um, especially if Gim would have went down. There was pretty much nobody else there. We kind of started out with Corey Fuller. Um, a couple of guys got injured. And so you had to have a development guy like Tommy Lee Lewis on the field. He was highly regarded. Um, or highly recommended um, by Pil Bill Parcells. I almost said Bill Parcells. That wow. would be hilarious. Um, <laughs> highly recommended by Bill Parcells. We're going to get taken off the air. Uh, he definitely showed a lot of good things during preseason, even even going back to some of the camps uh, that are just recent. Uh, he's continued to make plays. It's just that it, it hasn't necessarily been able to carry over um, when the lights come on, and yet, uh, it, I think it will be tough. I think they because Tommy Tommy had a lot of. There's, he's just so limited in what he can do. I mean, and, and he's not consistent. And if you're going to be a guy of his undersized nature and be that type of player, you've got to be consistent in producing. And he's not been. He'll have a wow you play, and then he'll have three straight plays where he does nothing or he runs bad routes. I mean, it's that's the thing with Tommy Lee is. He's not consistent, and I think that's why he might not make the roster. I think that's why they've also targeted guys like Boston Scott. So, all right, yeah. so Boston Scott's probably going to be the main guy uh, this preseason. We should look forward to taking the spot with special teams. Yeah, when it comes to the return yeah. game, I think not, Scott's not Kamara, the name not to watch. Kamara anymore, though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Kamara's back there. I love what he does, but he scares me when he's in there. It's great to have Kamara back there, and it's great to know that he can do that. So if you need to put him in like a clutch moment and you trust him to make a play, mm -hmm. put him there. But overall, you don't want to risk his health by putting him on a punt return and kick return. And I know that Pierre Thomas did it for years, and they didn't worry about it. But I don't know. I wouldn't risk Kamara. I wouldn't. All right, guys. Thanks. I appreciate it. Appreciate you calling in. Okay. Oh, dang. Yeah, Josiah about to get blocked. Just, I ain't going to read that. I ain't going to read <laughs> that. Josiah getting blocked. Josiah, if Josiah would have said that as a super chat, I would have read it. But because he didn't, he's getting blocked. But speaking of super chats, dang. Luke says he knows that you and I have talked about this, but refresh his memory. Mm -hmm. Getting Des Bryant, could he help the Saints? I'm going to say no. At this point, I'm going to say no. 
I I agree, man. We we talked about it a bit in the chat. Like Dez literally runs three routes right now. And listen, that would be fine if Dez was like twenty one years old, um, and also could give you special team snaps, things like that. Dez is gonna come in as number one a veteran, which means he's not gonna be paying special teams. He's gonna want a significant amount of money. I'm going to need more than three routes out of you, my guy. I'm going to definitely need more than three routes out of you. And I think I think Sean likes diversity there. I think he likes guys that can kind of do multiple things. I think Dez is limited um, in what he could do. Uh, he's, well, he's, and, and, he's and it's more than just the route running, too. One of the biggest things you mentioned route running is the fact that a lot of the Saints' you know, passing concepts rely so much on timing and anticipation. And if you run a limited tree, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to struggle in getting the timing there. And – that's what makes guys like Michael Thomas so good is they have that coming out of the gate. And I just – if you want to have him as a backup and he's cheap and you like him more than you like Brandon Coleman, sure. But, I mean, you've got Michael Thomas playing the position he plays. I understand Thomas is really good in the slot, but that's because he's a number one sliding down and just being better than the guy across from him. I don't want to keep him there. I just – I'm not a, a – Des to the New Orleans fan. And most people that I see on Twitter say the same things that you and I say. He's not a good fit. Do you like him? No. Yeah. I mean, I can like the guy. I just don't think he's a fit. I agree, man. I, and I when he signs, good. we'll make up some excuse about how it works. <laughs> Until it doesn't anymore. Yeah, it's not going to work. I wonder, will he go back to Dallas, man? I see a lot of guys know. that still look like Orlando Skandrick said he'd like to play with him. I wonder, wonder if they'll, they'll – They'll actually be able to, to rally um, Josiah and to, to bring him this. I don't know, man. Boogie went to the Warriors for veteran minimum, so, I mean, uh, maybe he's going to go to New England for veteran minimum. You can go to the Eagles for vet minimum. I I mean, he's going to find a home. He's, he's definitely going to find a home. and He's, he's going to be motivated. That's probably the good thing. Um, But I, I do think he needs to go somewhere where – he will be a number two or number one option. Mm. And coming here, he'd definitely not be the number one or the number two option. Because um, you're going to have to feed the ball to him to kind of see Dez for Dez. Yeah. Um, it, and that's, that's just and not can you do that happen. anymore? I don't know if he can honestly do it anymore. But we do have another caller. As we've got a few more minutes left in the show before we wrap up. Brennan finally calling us in. How you doing, Brennan? I know, right? Um, was goody. I'm I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, my question is about Mark Ingram. Okay. Mm-hmm. Since the four game suspension is inevitable at this point, what do you think it? What do you think his stat line is going to look like? I would be impressed if he can still get to a thousand yards after that. I would be I, listen, shocked. I think I would be impressed mainly because we know this is technically a contract season for him. And yeah. the more yards he gets statistically, the better it looks when he starts to bargain for that contract, right? Um, so I'm what I'm hearing from you is Sean Payton is going to make sure he doesn't see that so that he comes on a cheap contract. I'm sure. going to bet on Mark Ingram here and and and, and see if, if Mark can prove me right, if, if he's in that mindset. I'm going to say that, that Mark still gets 1,000 yards after he returns. All right, well. A 1,000 yards and, and six to eight touchdowns. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hop off the hype train right now, and I'm going to say his stat yeah. line looks closer to a 750 yards rushing. Still very good number. I mean, we're talking about him rushing maybe 4.7, maybe even five yards per carry again, but it's 750 yards, five touchdowns, and then maybe catching another 30 receptions for 300 yards. You know, similar – I think he gets a 1,000 all-purpose yards, but last year he got 1,500. I don't think he's going to come close to that again this year. I think he gets right around 1,000. If you want, a, like, a comparable year, look at his year at 2015 where he played in 12 games, where he had 769 yards on six TDs and 400 yards receiving. I think that's kind of what we have to expect from him coming back this year, assuming he plays the other 12 games. I want him to do well. What do you mean? I, I definitely want him to I, do. Oh, Josiah talking trash again. Well. I definitely want him to do well. Like I would mm-hmm. love him to hit the marks because you know the main reason. If he hits those marks, he becomes the leading rusher in Saints history. I would love that for Mark Ingram. I just it's hard for me to see it happen. See, Brian's on my side. Brian's with me. Brian's like Mark will get a thousand. Yeah, but Brian, oh, okay, all purpose not at the end. Brian right now. He he disagrees with most of the things you say though. So do you really want to jump on Brian Madukum? 
Hold on. Let, yes. me, let me sell something to Brian real quick. He's on my side I agree right now. That, I mean, I agree that he would – I think I agree with Deuce a little bit. He would get like 800 yards, something like that, maybe five or five to nine touchdowns. AK would kind of bring his game up a little bit. But Sean Payton might try to take him out of the picture. He he's gonna get the he's gonna get the rushing record for sure ahead of Deuce McAllister. I don't know for Deuce sure. Blake, he he's seven hundred and thirty four yards behind, and he's five TDs behind. And just for numbers' uh-huh. sake, no Saints running back has ever rushed for fifty touchdowns. If he got six this year, he would hit that number. I mean, you have to take it, you have to take playoffs into the picture as well. Okay. So that's my opinion. I I'm going to go with with the money, wanting that last big contract, knowing that he's got Alvin Kamara nipping at his heels. Um, especially when you when you can kind of feel your replacement breathing down your neck. I don't know. I just I just feel like he. I think we'll see angry Mark. I think he'll get stuck in like angry Hulk, angry Mark mode, kind of like the Hulk was stuck as the Hulk for like eight years. Um, and I think I think he's going to be angry Mark when he returns. I think he could go off for some big games. The question will be, will we feed him? But when I look at the games that we face, we face a lot of run-heavy teams, which means yeah. that uh, things shouldn't – late in games, especially if they're not close, we should be able to run down teams really, really late. And I know that some of the teams we will face next year aren't really high-scoring um, offenses. Now, some of them will require us to keep the game close, um, depending on certain situations, but we should be able to run away um, with a couple of games and be able to put them on ice, and maybe you can see Ingram make up some of those carries by having a, a heavier workload later in games. I just I like the motivation factor. I, I like the I like seeing the kind of the carrot dangling um, in front of someone. I think Mark is extremely motivated to get um, a, a last final contract um, especially as a running back, I mean, he's he's got mileage. Uh, he's not not high mileage, but I think that I, I just I I'm gonna take Mark here. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on Mark. Hmm. Works for me, man. Like I said I you guys know I've been a supporter of Ingram for years. I mean, I I've got no problem with that happening and being true. It's just you know it's tough to envision, but I'm here for it. So. Appreciate you calling in, Brendan. I'm going to get to the Super Chat question before we wrap up the show. Bring in the good stuff. All right, thank you. Yeah, bring in the good stuff. Super Chat is from Matt Cooper. He says, 2009, New Orleans Saints got 26 interceptions. Have we hit that number since then? And if not, do we think that we'll ever get more than that in one season? We have not hit that number. Uh, In fact, I don't think we've even come close. But uh, I will look and see what the actual numbers are and how close we've actually gotten. But, yeah, that, that, that's some freaky high numbers. And a lot of that was just, you know, that, that was the guy that we probably shouldn't mention his name, you know, because um, he's in jail now. But him getting nine on his own really helped inflate that number. That was just a really good team, though, really good secondary. I think the Saints secondary now has the potential to get somewhere in that stratosphere. But, I mean, if you look – you, you go look at any year in the league, there's maybe one team that gets 26 or more interceptions. It's very rare. That's a super high number. So And right now, so far, the highest I've seen the Saints get is 15 since then, but I'm still working forward. You got any thoughts on that, Elias, as I work through all these stats? No, I got thoughts on Elias looking like an old version of Will Smith who doesn't shoot. I will take looking like any version of Will Smith. I, I want to look like Will Smith's oh, pockets. I'll take looking like the not so lint on the inside of Will Smith's pockets, uh, which he probably uses a black card. Um, now, I would – listen, I when you start to add, guys, if, if Coleman can get back to um, three years prior Coleman, um, where he's nabbing – six, five, six interceptions in a year. You've got Lattimore getting another five, six interceptions, four interceptions. You've got Marcus Williams, who I predict to have at least eight interceptions next year. Um, say A.J. Klein catches some of the, the at least the four interceptions he could have had last year. DeMario, I mean, I think the potential is there for them to do that. Um, the only problem is that uh, 
you don't have a Jabari Grill. A lot of those guys were veterans. They were good at reading some of those trap schemes uh, that that Greg Williams ran, where they kind of baited the quarterback to do certain things. Um, and you've got to there, there's certain aspects to knowing how to play the game, and that normally comes with um, experience. I, however, Dennis Allen was the defensive backs coach. Um, I think yeah. they could do it. I think they've got well, the pass rush to do it. You get some tilt balls next year. I think they could. I think next year could be the year you actually see them get hit that number. Well, I had brought it up, and as I finally got to it, yeah, the Saints had 20 last year, which is higher than average. You know, what I mean, and in theory, you've only improved. Now, I've got to say this thing, man: you cannot be letting this man with a Mennonite name roast you this much on our chat. That wasn't a roast. Though. I don't take that as an insult. Like, if, I don't know, man. Will I don't. Smith. I don't I mean, think. I, I don't think Will bro. Smith is aged yeah. that great. They even move. See. If you any like, Will Smith, I think you're a wild, wild west Will Smith with a little bit more hair. But um That was a terrible movie. I was thinking more like Independence Day Will Smith. Basically every Will Smith movie is a pretty horrible movie. That is a lie. Why would you fabricate like that? Because and that doesn't I mean his Legend acting's was... bad, but I Am Legend's a good one. But if we're talking about his, his whole discovery discovery, his whole uh, uh, everything he's ever yeah, for everything he's ever put out. And I'm not saying all of it's his fault, but he's got to put in a lot of cheesy dope. movies. Hitch, I don't like Hitch. Wasn't my thing. Hitch was dope, man. What a, Hitch was Hitch was epic. I don't know. You hate. I, I, no, I no, no. I'm just. Movie here. I, I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm just saying I don't like a lot of his movies. I do. I do. I think Will. It's kind of like I didn't like. I, he, I didn't like Pursuit of Happiness. You know, I thought Suicide Squad was crap. You know, uh, now, Suicide Squad was was trash. Did you like Seven Pounds? Um, I thought Pursuit of Happiness was was good. Did I like what? Seven Pounds. I thought Seven Pounds was really good. Okay. Really enjoyed the story in Seven Pounds. I did not like um, uh, Hancock. Now I will say one thing that he did that I thought was incredible was Concussion. That movie I give him a lot of credit for. And you know I have not seen Concussion yet. Very good. Know. Very. Good. I have not seen Concussion yet. I don't know, maybe it's just because I got so saturated with Will Smith because like through the nineties and now that man has been in so much stuff. Like they ran the men in black thing into the ground too, and that, that put a sour taste in my mouth. So Will Smith has not aged well. Will Smith has aged actually pretty well. It looks pretty much the same. I mean, everybody gets some gray hairs, which I can't wait till I get my first gray hair. Because there's a lot of people that don't get gray hairs in life. They I think I think Will Smith looks age. decent, but I don't know. He's starting to look like your crazy uncle. Listen, how about this? How about Eddie Murphy didn't age well? Okay, no, Eddie Murphy aged horrible. Eddie Murphy lived real bad. When I think of, like, not aging well, I think of Eddie Murphy, um, where he just, where I don't know what happened between Norbit and <laughs> a couple of, like, yeah. I, think, I think Will has aged pretty solid. I mean, I... I'm assuming that there's a lot that takes a toll on you as an actor. So I can see mm-hmm. how that can um, start to affect you, the traveling. Uh, there's a lot that goes into doing what he does. Um, Man, just just looking yeah, through now, looking through all this now, I'm going to go ahead and, and halfway retract my statement. I think Will Smith has a lot of good movies I really like, but I don't have a lot of middle ground with him. Like there's other movies I just can't stand. Like After Earth, I thought it was complete trash. But then I Am Legend... Really good movie. Bright, the Netflix movie that just came out, I thought was pretty bad. But Independence Day is an all-time great. So I think my problem with Will Smith is not that he made bad movies, that he just got he didn't have any middle ground. Like it's not just a movie that's like eh. It's like he's got bad boys, and, <laughs> and then then he's got the new Karate Kid. So <laughs> I mean, when he's involved in a bad movie, it's usually a really really bad movie. Yeah, right? I think that's my problem. It's not that he's bad. bad. He does really. Yeah, bad. It, it, he's just on. He's so far on both ends of the spectrum. So, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Giga Test says yeah, Bright right. was trash. Yeah, I, I, Bright Bright was pretty trash. So anyway, you need to a give us you need to give Lawrence. us our thing. And I'm not even close to the same. What? What What are you talking about? Elias looks like a younger Martin Lawrence. What? Martin Lawrence. We think about the same Martin Lawrence as another Martin Lawrence. A woo woo, a woo 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 woo. That Martin Lawrence. Yeah, I know. I mean, a Black Knight in King Arthur's Court, Martin Lawrence. <laughs> a a a. That was that was bad. Don't look like. Don't act um, like everybody didn't have that dang jersey in the late nineties. 
<laughs> that was it. That was it. That was it. Yeah, I don't think you look like Martin Lawrence at all. Yeah, I mean, was a low blow. I don't know. I was like, if you got like, if you got really cut back, lined up, and you just had the goatee, maybe, maybe I could see it. I would say my boss, even just today, told me that I kind of resemble Childish Gambino. Um, I need to grow my beard back out a little bit, but uh, I don't, I don't know why everybody thinks I look like so many people. Hey, I did get to chill with a lot of my family over the holiday. What well, I good. do have Mor- Morgan Freeman is actually pretty close kin. Um, the majority of the side of that family look like a bunch of Morgan Freemans, and they've got the moles and all. Like I have the mole on my lip right here. Like it, it, there was really a resemblance there, so that was dope. So I I know Morgan Freeman is is like. Morgan is like 165 years old um, at this point, which is, you know, I'll take that as a blessing. Not many people can live that long. Morgan has been in a lot of movies. Um, Look, Marshawn? Josiah need to calm down. Josiah said he's going to come for me next. I don't. Josiah Gilbert sounds like he's one of Drake's ghostwriters. I don't even. Leave me alone. You stay in your little high rise, your Fortune 500, and stay away from me, fam. I, I'm not even. I, I don't know. I'm not in a roasting mood tonight. Normally, I'd like. I'd be on his top, but uh. Ooh, Tess says you way better looking than Childish Gambino. Tess, look now, nah, Tess, don't you? Hey, hey, don't you do that? Oh, a lot of little bit. Childish Gambino is a little drink. bit. He he's a little bit rougher than you are. Childish is is a, is pretty nerdy. Well, I'm talking about like the main look he usually. Gives out it's a little bit rougher. You're a little bit more clean cut than he usually shows himself as. Oh, don't worry. The beard is coming back. The beard has been on hiatus because it's hot. Um, and I lost the bit. Remember, I lost the dog on bit, and I had to cut my beard. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, but the beard is coming back for the for the winter. Um, definitely got to keep the keep the face warm a little bit. So we'll we'll get a slightly different look. We'll say this, man. He was fantastic in Solo. I haven't seen. Have you? You saw Solo? Yep. And he was really I, good in Solo. Really. But good. he's a really, really good actor. Like yeah. he's a multi-talented. Like and he does everything well. It, whether it's writing, um, musically, acting, he's believable. Like no, nah, he's a really talented guy. Like a really, really talented guy. See, not just I just throwing out lame ducks, man. He throwing out Cam Newtons over here. He says, I look like Kevin James from King of Queens, but I'm not as funny. I know in a good while I look like no dang Kevin James. At least pick That's somebody with a red beard. At least pick somebody with a red beard. Come on. You you a redhead? Strawberry blonde, red beard. Man, I heard I heard like like people that have red, like one of my uh coworkers um was a ready. Supposedly you guys can like handle enormous amounts of pain that no like normal people can't deal with are you more teletubby or are you more like iron man we got a lot of talents that's all i'm saying all right i don't even i don't I, i'm not sure i really wanted to get that mental picture um oh see now david is being hurtful he says i look like michael rapaport with diabetes my face ain't ate up with meth i do not look like michael rapaport with diabetes try again wait what I, what happened <laughs> no comment. I got it. no comment. no comment. I see. See now, everybody no trying. Comment, everybody trying. What we got now? Deuce looks like the white boy who raps like Ghostface. We ain't got nobody decent here. Deuce is the Henry the Eighth of Saints commentary. Oh my god. Didn't Henry the Eighth lose a head? Don't get me lying, man. Isn't that Shakespeare? I'm gonna do my Google. We got Marshawn, he he Marshawn did hit you with the cheddar bob. Nah, and I, that was kind of close, actually. Uh, yeah, cheddar bob. Now I will say this. Going by the pictures, I definitely look like Henry the <laughs> Eighth. <laughs> oh, you, I, you checked out the picture? Yeah, I, the Henry VIII one, it, it kind of hits home. Th- this man looked like me. <laughs> so that that one, we, we'll give you that one. Henry VIII, you get a golf clap. 
Now, you, you lose a little bit because ain't nobody know who the heck Henry VIII is. But, yeah, he definitely looks a little bit like me. Oh, yeah, six marriages? My goodness. Oh, I think I remember reading about him in history class. Oh, yeah. He's the one that created the Church of England because they wouldn't let him get divorces. Oh, so that's how that works. That, that's Got how it. we've heard of him. Got it. Josiah says, I'm a heavy set Eminem wannabe. What? How? When have I ever rapped? When? And I never grew up in a trailer park. You miss me with that. What? The, now you just reaching, man. You reaching. You reaching. Mm. Fry Tuck with a better haircut. This is getting really, really good. I'm not sure that I'm ready for the disrespect tonight. Yeah, but like, here's the thing. Like, I love a good one. But, man, now most of these people just pulling these young, these whack. Oh, young Van Vader. Big Van Vader. That's a good I, one. That I That's can, a good one. I like that, that one. That I can see. That I can see. Rest in peace, man. He, I think he passed away like last week, huh? Really? I didn't hear that. Yeah. He, pa he passed away like last week, man. Man, I didn't know that. White Wolf says, Deuce just look like Deuce and Elias looks like Elias. Now, now you don't have to defend me. It's fine. I mean... I'll very happily take a joke or, or dish them out. I mean, it's just kind of my style. So, I, I don't. It's cool. Will says bad reach blocks. Yeah, <laughs> some of these just whack. Some of you guys, please don't ever do stand up. Please do not. I mean, some people call Quentin if you want to do stand up. Call Quentin. Quentin Nelson. He's gonna be a heck of a guard. Yes, I know. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes, I do uh, know. You got a you got a special thought for us to end the show? Man, I I actually am I've got roasted so bad today that I I have I have no thoughts except for maybe like love yourself. And ah, this is a good one. Okay. I came across an old post, uh, old Facebook post actually, and I was pretty irate, man. I was a pretty upset and that. angry kid. And what I realized is that the the reason I had issues is because I constantly searched for approval through the eyes of other people. Um, I I only saw myself having value based on what other people saw. And so when those people did not uh, pretty much reflect what I thought they should see, it usually brought me down. Um, and so in that aspect, I found to you have to develop your sense of self, your your image um, of self, and see self how you want to see self, and not necessarily how other people see you. Um, and that's a fair lesson to learn because you never know how many people out there do look um, for certain things. They want they want to know that they look good. They want to know that they're they're in vogue or in crowd, and they rely on the other people, um, the reactions um, from other people to tell them that. Um, and this can lead to a lot of, you know, dark, dark places, depressing moments. So try to always see yourself through your own eyes. Have your image of yourself um, and then allow that to radiate. And then people will accept that image. Because if you take in what other people um, have an image, a lot of the times it's very distorted. And you will find that you won't even recognize yourself at times. So see yourself as you see yourself. Um, and yeah. That's, that's a good one, man. That's a solid one. I was going to bring one if you didn't have one. I like that one. That's a good one. I remember seeing you post that and I was like, man, this man has changed a great deal. And I'm very glad that you and I weren't trying to do that podcast then because it would not be the same podcast. It was, a, you know, it was a lot of, that was a lot of seething, like, like deep down. Like I was still like, you know, how I am now, but there was always just that side of me that, that wanted like I wanted to be popular, I wanted to be liked. I was a kid that didn't have a lot of friends in in school, and probably for all the right reasons. Like I, I know I look back now and I realize that the only reason people responded that way mm. to me is because that was kind of how I portrayed myself. Like I, I didn't like to talk much, um, you know, and so I, I alienated people on my own by the things that I did, and I thought that they were alienating me, and yet it was me alienating them, and it was just a reflection. Um, and mm -hmm. sometimes it, it takes it takes a while to learn that. That's something that you don't just it doesn't the light bulb just doesn't flick on. Um, it takes a lot of time. I, I never went to any counseling or anything like that. 
life lessons just teach you certain things and if you, you grow by wisdom like I try to do um, and try to learn from past experiences is something that you take on but that, if that's anything that I can pass on it would be that um, constantly make the image of yourself that you want it to be and then allow that to radiate um, and you will shine you, you will shine in your own way um, because you will put here because you have your own special talents your own special things about you and sometimes people just need to re recognize just how special they are um, and in the world today you know you see a lot of people that want to look like this person be like this person talk like that person um, and they lose the ability to see the uniqueness in themselves about what makes them them mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's yeah that's it's a pretty good thing to share man it is man I'm gonna hit it from the opposite angle and this is inspired by conversation I have with another gentleman who works in our field in life and this is something that I have to constantly check myself on and I know you do too because you're like me a little bit of that um you, you're proud of yourself you got to a point in your life where you're successful you're happy how things are going and you get a little bit narcissistic no matter what you choose to do in life whether it's relationships business work don't dig yourself into a pit and then fall in it and wonder where the pit came from be willing and able to see your own mistakes and learn from them and grow from them and don't constantly blame others for problems you truthfully did to yourself. I think that's been a big learning point for me and that's something that is difficult for a lot of people to learn and people carry that into their 40s and 50s and continue to make their own problems and then wonder why they keep happening and get caught in a cycle. Don't dig your own holes mm -hmm. and fall in them. Be willing to accept that you make mistakes because it's that knowledge of the mistake that helps you prevent doing it again. Instead of acting like somebody else did it to you, and then you just keep getting caught in a circle. And that is your um, walk with deuce, grow a little bit, mature a little bit. Because I had to do that in the past few years, and it's important. Just a closer walk with, with thee. thee. No, with thee. No, we're going, no, we going old school. No, I was going with deuce. Just a closer walk with deuce. I won't be walking with these <laughs> nasty people. Oh, wow. I'm talking about Josiah. There. Josiah all, all up in him. Because Josiah said you got mommy issues because of your, your thoughts. So we had to. Yeah, but Josiah can only say that because I've already said that my relationship with my mom wasn't the best thing for me in my youth. So he's only going off of what I've already revealed. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to psychologically pinpoint me in that way. So eh, he's just yeah. playing the field, playing the role. Hey, man. I appreciate all those psych classes I took in seminary. So. I did not take psych classes, yet I have a very full comprehension of psychology Dude, just from life. That works, man. It, it, it's, it's honestly helpful. Helps you get a little bit better at uh, introspection. Anyway, we got to wrap up. Uh -huh. Got to wrap up. Got to wrap up. We will see y'all Tuesday. We'll have another understanding the NFC South. And Twigga says, are we going to do these streams on Sunday? We'll do the streams following the game. On Sundays, we're going to have an immediate following the game podcast after every game. Uh, so whether that's Sunday, Thursday, Monday, after every game, you'll get a podcast. So we will catch you nice, fine people later. Hit us up on Twitter and YouTube and Facebooks and emails and Gmails, however you want to get in contact with us, because we love y'all. Each and every one of y'all, even Taven. Oh, and also, we're going to um, test wants to know if we're doing a Saturday chill stream. I'm down. Saturday, chill stream. Going on Saturday. Look out for uh, mm -hmm. if we do, it's gonna be eight thirty yeah. on Saturday, where it's a chill stream, relaxed, ain't even necessarily football, just just us having at it. Well, maybe we'll, we're not going to debate Drake again. We ain't doing that. But um, y'all be blessed, y'all be good. We will see y'all on the next one. On the flip side, East Bank, West Bank, we love y'all. Peace.